Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina, and it is that time. We are getting ready for our live stream show. We're going to be starting up here in just a few moments. Appreciate everybody tuning in and hanging out with us here at Hubbard's Marina for our Sunday night live stream show. We are uh, getting ready to roll here. It is August 1st, believe it or not. Time flies when you're having fun or when you have babies. <laughs> and uh, we are uh, just about ready to get started on the show, but did want to uh, talk to you guys a little bit and tell you a little bit about what to expect tonight. Remember, as always, don't forget to comment where you're watching from uh, if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it don't matter. Comment where you're watching from. Tell us uh, where you're tuning in from. And make sure, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to give our page a follow. Instagram, make sure you follow us. Uh, YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate it. We are going to get rolling tonight shortly, but we do not have any photos for y'all. Unfortunately, we are on the tail end of our red snapper season, and we are burnt, burnt to a crisp. And unfortunately, it has been tough to get photos, especially me being away from the office, uh, not around to take photos and videos myself, and not around to... Uh, gently remind the crew about photos and videos we've been a little lacking lately in uh, that area so we don't have a lot of photos to show you tonight unfortunately uh, plus with red tide going on inshore not really much uh, photo wise from our usual suspects uh, but don't want to give away too much we'll get more into that here shortly I uh, do want to give Dan Neto a shout out for those 500 stars, buddy. Really appreciate that, guys. If you're not watching on uh, Facebook occasionally, you'll hear me uh, give shout outs to people who send stars. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or Instagram uh, and you're not familiar with what stars are, basically it's a way for people through Facebook to show their support for our pages and uh, uh, basically helps to fuel these live stream shows and uh, all the cool stuff that we got going on in uh, our studio and stuff like that. So really appreciate those supporters and uh, those of you who send stars. A big shout out to the supporters group. Hopefully you have enjoyed your uh, behind the scenes photos I've been sharing lately of all the kids. We're going to share some of that tonight during the show for everybody. Uh, but uh, the supporters have been getting overloaded because that, that's the majority of what I got going on in my life right now. But big news is uh, I am going to be uh, back in the office, back at it tomorrow, hopefully. That's the goal at least. Who knows where we'll go from there, but time will tell. Just playing this one by ear. And uh, Larry White, appreciate those stars, buddy. Thank you very much, my man. Um, but as I was saying, getting back into the office uh, starting tomorrow and uh, trying to dig myself out of uh, the hole that's been created. Essentially, I don't think I've sat down and really thoroughly answered emails since like the end of June. It's been a, uh, a long run, unfortunately, uh, without uh, getting caught up because uh, the beginning of July, we had that hurricane, uh, Elsa, and then after that, we had uh, Red Tide kicking up, and then my daughter was born three weeks early, so definitely a little bit of a uh, wrench thrown in the best laid plans there, but we're going to get this video started up. Josh is still trying to work out some kinks, uh, but we'll get rolling on the show while he continues to work behind the scenes tirelessly to uh, make this whole shindig run smoothly. If you're watching on Instagram, don't forget that kind of uh, uh, aspect ratio or orientation is a little funky. Uh, so you can continue to watch on Instagram, but if you go to your phone's browser and go to Instagram.com through the browser instead of the app, that will allow you to... Uh, uh, view the 
the stream in a uh, better aspect ratio when you turn your phone sideways. It won't look so compressed and you won't just see the middle of the screen. You'll be able to see everything. So if you're watching on Instagram, definitely don't do it through the app. Go through the interwebs and then turn your phone sideways to get the full screen. Or you can watch on Instagram or or uh, watch on Facebook or YouTube uh, where the orientation is uh, obviously normal, normal-fied. <laughs> Josh, if you go to the Creator Studio and then use that pre-link from that, that page that we have set up, that'll work. Oh, really? They keep changing it on us, huh? If you scroll up a little bit, I see uh, there's two HTTPSs in there. Something looks off. Yeah, that might help. Weird, man. They're, they're messing with us tonight. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this video rolling, Josh, while you're working on that. And uh, we'll be able to uh, get started on the show. The The live uh, comment generator, the random name picker, has given us a little bit of issue tonight, guys. So sorry about that. But without delay, uh, here we are for our Sunday night live stream show. Hopefully you all are ready for a great show. we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, despite the different things going on in the fisheries world. Uh, one big thing is amberjack season and triggerfish are reopening today. Today is the start of uh, amberjack season for August, September, and October. Triggerfish reopened. We don't know how long they'll be open for. One of the weird things uh, about triggerfish is recently we've basically had those seasons uh, on triggerfish open up around uh, March 1st every year, and they typically will close sometime early May. Uh, they stayed open as late as mid-May, uh, but now we're seeing triggerfish get longer and longer, especially with the recent catch level change where they increased our uh, landings quota for triggerfish. So definitely should help us get more access uh, and a longer season for these trigger fish. So good news there for you deep water fishermen who frequent our 12-hour extreme or 39-hour trips uh, where those trigger fish are more prevalent. Uh, keeper size trigger fish at least are more pre prevalent. So we're excited about that and looking forward to hopefully a very lengthy trigger fish season because there's no end date announced for trigger fish they basically just go until that quota is projected to be met so we don't know when that's going to be uh but should hopefully be at least a month or perhaps more so wait hurry up and wait on that amberjack season opened up today too uh again like i mentioned amberjack are open august september and october uh but amberjack fishing not so great right now. Amberjack overall, uh, very, very low kind of in compared to historical trends. Uh, so we have seen very uh, tough uh, kind of concentrations of amberjack. Very difficult to get on a spot and catch a bunch of keeper amberjack like we did five, ten years ago and previous to that. So Definitely a little tricky on the amberjack, but they are open. We will target them occasionally, and you have a chance to get some keeper amberjack. And on our coast, uh, before someone from the East Coast or the Atlantic comments on our coast, amberjack are a prized eaten fish. You remove that bloodline, and they're good eaten. We don't have the worm issue that they have on the east coast of Florida. Over on the east coast and along the south Atlantic coasts around Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, they are very wormy and thought to be more of a trash fish, whereas along kind of central west Florida and up through the panhandle, amberjack are highly sought after. And even into uh, Louisiana, northern Texas, uh, amberjack are highly sought after. Good eating fish. So we're excited about that. And uh, Red Snapper is coming to a close. End of day tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. You have to be at the dock. So uh, definitely uh, kind of bittersweet for uh, Red Snapper to be closing. I think for a lot of us in the industry, uh, we love when Red Snapper season opens and we're happy to see it end. <laughs> and a lot of anglers, I think, uh, are sad to see it end, and uh, I think my personal 
uh, kind of bet, I would actually, I would go so far to guarantee we'll see the FWC Governor DeSantis announce an extended private recreational red snapper season sometime later this fall due to Hurricane Elsa and all the other issues that we had come up weather-wise during uh, that short private recreational season. Keep in mind the private recreational season opened June 4th and it closed July 28th. The federal for hire season that Hubbard's Marina operates under was June 1st through end of day August 2nd. So we already had a longer season compared to the private recreational angler, but we're managed by the feds and the feds use the marine resource intercept program or something like that. So I forget the acronym, but it's MRIP and the way they're, uh, uh, the way their survey works is basically it's on a two-month wave, and we won't get uh, waves three and four, which include red snapper season, until as late as, like, October. And uh, by then, it takes six months to make a rule. So if they say, oh, you didn't reach your quota, by the time they would reopen season, it would be in the next fishing year. So there's no way that the federal for hire component, the charter boats, party boats, that are federally permitted are going to get an extended season, even though we had really bad weather that probably limited us from catching our full quota. Whereas the private recreational anglers on private boats, they are managed by the state under the FWC's state refish survey. So it's a different survey structure, different management body, and the state is much more nimble than the feds. So the state should be able to increase the length of the private recreational season. So when you see an announcement in a few months or a few weeks about Governor DeSantis and the FWC extending the private recreational red snapper season, do not call us and ask if that includes Hubbard's Marina because it does not. We're not private recreational anglers. We're federally permitted for hire anglers or fed permit for hire anglers. So not included in uh, the upcoming extension of red snapper season, unfortunately. Now, one thing I did want to get into uh, since we don't have many photos is a red tide update. So red tide is in the area. If you didn't know about that, uh, I think everybody does at this point, but Red Tide is definitely in the area, and this, uh, Josh uh, so quickly showed, is our forecast for the Tampa Bay area uh, created by USF and the FWC, uh, basically showing those red lines, and those red lines are very highly concentrated blooms of Red Tide that are located along our Gulf beaches and are actually making their way west into the Gulf of Mexico, which is not good. Uh, kind of the worst red tide that I personally dealt with in my lifetime was that 2017-18 red tide that was very widespread, very concentrated, and it extended into our near shore and offshore waters as far as like 14 to 16 miles. Uh, now, this red tide that's going on now is pretty patchy. It was really bad in Tampa Bay. Two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, it's since cleared up. You can see Tampa Bay is almost essentially completely red tide free, which is great news for Tampa Bay. But unfortunately, it's moved north quite a bit. Josh, scroll up a little bit for us. You can see it's even extending north past Clearwater, Honeymoon Island, Caladesi. It's all the way up off of Hernando now along our coast. So this red tide is more northerly now, and it's more out into the Gulf and along the beaches. Mostly, uh, in most areas, less than 12 miles. So about 9 to 12 miles is about as far out as this red tide has extended so far. We've seen dead fish as far as like 14 miles, though. And uh, basically how we're combating this is we're fishing a little bit further on those near shore trips. So, for example, our shortest trip closest to shore, the five-hour half day, uh, is being affected a little bit, but we're just fishing further. So it's a little longer ride out. You get a, the same amount of fishing time, uh, and we're getting past that red tide area, past those dead fish, and we've been actually doing pretty darn well. Captain Frank's going to be calling here any minute and giving us an update Captain on... Captain Frank's uh, bachelor oh, or that. Frank Marina. I conjured him. 
He called immediately as soon as I said that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> What's up, Frank? Your ears must have been ringing. Yeah, man. What's going on? Uh, not much, buddy. How are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. So we were just talking about the red tide and uh, uh, how it's starting to kind of move more near shore and kind of poking its way into uh, our more shallow half-day fishing areas, uh, but not really affecting our ability to catch fish, if you want to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, no, we, we've uh, we've been doing pretty good. We had a, a day or two where it was kind of questionable, where we had, you know, a, a low catch count uh, just for one of our, one or two of the half days. But other than that, uh, we've been doing really good um, on the, um, on the hogfish are showing up, you know, we're, we're do, um, we actually had a, a really great trip the other day. We saw, we had gags and scamps and everything on the, on a half day. It was really crazy. Wow. Um, it was, it was exciting. Yeah. We caught like seven scamps and, the, and like three gags and we got 17 hogfish on one spot. It was, it was wow. cool. It was a really fun stop. That's crazy, man. 17 yeah. hogfish. So the, the hogfish bite has definitely improved, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're back. I'm, I'm, I'm really ready to start thinking about, uh, you know, targeting them for, for uh, you know, at least throwing an all-day trip in here or there to do it. You know, that's crazy, man. So one thing that we experienced during that 2017 and 18 red tide that just kind of came to my mind as you spoke was we noticed during that red tide event that bloom kind of started south of us and creeped its way north slowly. And as it approached our area, we saw kind of a push of those fish. Uh, kind of, I think we had some of the better fishing that we've experienced right ahead of that red tide as a lot of those fish kind of moved out of that, that area and moved away from it. We're kind of being chased by it a little bit. And uh, we just kind of fished the leading edge of that and actually did pretty darn well, I think better than normal um, because we were kind of fishing the, that wave of fish moving out of the way of that red tide. Do you think perhaps yeah, was, maybe that could was, contribute to that good, that improved bite of hogfish that you've been seeing is kind of concentrating those fish on the edge? You know, that's, I mean, no, no, I don't because I, I'm seeing them uh, all the way, even out on our, uh, our 10 hour trips where I've been going out in some 85, 85 to hundred foot of water. Uh, well, actually I've, I can't kind of kick that down to about 85 to like 92, something like that. Uh, and we're catching um, hogfish in that zone also. Okay. So I, I, I think they're just back, and I, I'm ready to start. Uh, you know, at least at least having a, a day or two trying to target them and see how well we do. And if we do really good, you know, maybe we'll we'll, we'll uh, you know really start pushing it. That's awesome. But it, w- it would be nice to get some bigger shrimp in, but I know that's nothing that you know we have control over at all. You know, that's yeah. They should start improving here as we move into August. Typically around mid-August, that shrimping improves. Right now, shrimping ain't easy. And uh, shrimping ain't easy. You beat me to it. That was gonna be my next finish. <laughs> around uh, July yeah. fourth every year, it kind of dies off. The shrimp actually are moving to cooler waters, into deeper uh, Gulf waters, and they spread out. So it makes it really e- or difficult for those bait fishermen to go out there and, and trawl big catches of shrimp to sell to local bait shops, but. Around August, uh, mid-August, those rains start picking up, and as it rains more inshore, it cools off that bay water enough where it attracts those shrimp back as those nutrients that those shrimp hunt for in the phytoplankton get more prolific. Water temperatures drop a little bit because of the added rains. The daily afternoon thunderstorms really are the trick to bringing those shrimp back to shore. So it all depends on weather, buddy. Mm-hmm. Like anything, right? You got, you got that right. Yeah, yeah. We, we're still seeing some really nice red groupers, and, and they're not. You know, I'm not seeing any slowdown with those at all. I just, you know, how I feel about hogfish. I love catching them, but, but I love seeing the big groupers. You know, out the, yeah. eight, you know, you, you don't see the big groupers in, coming into where the hog, you know, where the those mass quantities of the hogfish are. So it's almost like one or the other. We are getting a few like 20 to 22 inch red groupers in that shallow stuff. Uh, I was, I was pushed back in due to weather um, uh, sometime last week. I'm not sure the exact date. And um, not only did we start getting into the hogfish, which was great to see, but we still had caught a couple red groupers here and there. And uh, 
we did a couple of drifts too and really, really did well on the drift. And nice. you know me, I used to drift up until about three years ago. I drifted all, all the whole t- entire 10 hour. Yeah. And then, you know, we, we've always adapted and overcome what we, with what we have to fish for. And uh, for the last three years, we've been anchoring every time. And, uh, but just recently I threw, you know, been throwing like a one hour drift in at the end and man, we were sl- slapping some heads and tails in the box lanes and, uh, nice. uh, lanes and, uh, gray snappers and some nice, uh, nice sea bass. So, uh, for the red grouper out deeper, still the squid strip thread fin kind of your best option. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th- th- I would just go with the squid strip period. I mean, because you get the, the lanes, the vermilions, and the red groupers with them. Um, you know, the it, when we're on anchor, you know, you can get those. those uh, ma- we're seeing a lot of mangrove snappers going up, too. Um, I, I wouldn't say a lot, but we're seeing them, you know, and to the point where, you know, it's <laughs> you, you use the squid and it doesn't really work uh, as well for the mangrove snappers. So, I mean, I love using the shrimp because absolutely everything eats those things. But, uh, you know, we're just... Uh, we're tied down with the, how small they are. So it's kind of like, I mean, we're, it, it doesn't really matter because we're catching fish all day long, you know? Yeah. So and you, you just have to decide shrimp. You just got to pay for them and you got to yeah. you know, find a place. You just to have to them. decide what you're going for. If, you, if you're out there and you want to get a hog fish, you got to, you know, you got to throw the shrimp on. And if you, if you want a string or slap full of fish at the end of a 10 hour, you know, a, a squid strip is where I would tell you to go, you know? I got And, you. um, it's just everything is just everything seems to be biting right now, except where, you know, the, the gags have been tough for us down here. I know I've, I've heard they're getting a few up to the North, but uh, out of our, out of my range, at least for a 10 hour. Yeah. Getting a few what? <clears throat> Gag groupers. Oh, I got you. Yeah. That... And, and, and shallow stuff way up there. No, way, way too far for us. Well, right now they are, but it depends on where that red tide goes. As I was saying before you got on the phone, We've been seeing that red tide creep further north. Right now, it's almost up to Hernando, uh, and that's that's extending 10, 12 miles out. So I'm really hoping it doesn't get up there any further because the feds know about it. A lot of fishermen know about it. That area kind of from Hernando up north of Crystal River all the way out to about 25, 30 miles, it's shallow, super rocky, and it's kind of believed to be – a gag grouper, red grouper nursery. And if that area yeah. gets hit hard with red tide, that can affect our red group and red grouper and uh, gag grouper fishery for years, years to come. So they yeah. believe the downturn we saw in the red grouper over the last three to five years had a lot to do with that 2014, 2016, 17 and 18 red tide bloom that all hit that area pretty heavily. So, Open and yeah, I'm really surprised again. I'm really surprised at how little of it I'm seeing right now. Like it, it was all here, like mm-hmm. everything was dead, and you know, all of a sudden there's snook back at the docks, and there's you know we're seeing other fish showing up back at the docks too. Um, you know, people are catching mangrove snappers again there, and there was nice. like nothing. There was nothing there two weeks ago, and um, you know we had a experience a day or two out there on the water where. It was for eight nine miles, just dead fish, and it was mostly pinfish. I saw a lot. I did see a few hogfish, a few sea bass, and you know a few pig, uh, just a few smaller ones. But and then you saw the occasional goliath grouper, and some of you had told me about a tarpon. Uh, but I, I didn't see a lot of big fish out there dead. A few redfish too, some bull reds I did see. But uh, in in uh, regards to how many fish are there there wasn't a lot of dead ones you know what i mean that's good that's good that's good news and uh, hopefully yeah. that trend will continue and it will continue to kind of either move north or dissipate we've seen it dissipate in tampa bay quite a bit and just hoping it doesn't get out yeah. any further yeah let's just hope it dissipates but you know that's we, we don't want you know you know even though we may have competitors up there we don't want that for anybody you know no. We want we want to see our waters back crystal clear again, and you know just hope for the best for everybody. Yeah, so yeah. fishing's good. Anyhow, you know, fishing's good, and I'm I'm getting ready to go out of town. For those of you that are uh, do enjoy fishing with me, uh, I am getting getting ready to go out of town, 
But uh, I'll be back on the, uh, the I think the, you know, I'm leaving the fifth. Is, uh, Tuesday, you're running the 10-hour, right? Tuesday, yep. Tuesday, and then I'll be back um, the following Wednesday. Nice. Nice. Not too, yeah. not too long. No, not too long. But um, I'm, I'm out. I'm out, people. It was, right, a long, it, was, it was a long season. It was a long season. It was a long season. Kind of abbreviated for me a little bit uh, with the birth of Emma, but still uh, equally yeah. – uh, uh, Taxing, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you have it any better because you, you, you didn't have to uh, come in the last few weeks because you had a child. I don't think that you had it better than us. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a different kind of uh, a break from work. It was different. Exactly. Yeah. Rewarding, though. Rewarding. Yeah. Well, yeah, I exactly. appreciate your time tonight, Frank. Anything parting you want to relay to people, yeah, well, tip-wise, no. yeah. suggestions, what you've been seeing? I think uh, what, what we'll do is um, we, I'm gonna, sometime uh, in the next two days before I leave town, I'm going to get together with you and we'll figure out a day uh, when I, after I come back to ask, actually go out specifically. We're going to do a full all-out hog fishing day. And uh, if uh, just hang tight and Dylan will uh, announce that uh, probably uh, next Sunday or through the uh, – yeah, the, we'll uh, announce it on the supporters page when Frank uh, decides on the day, and then we'll announce it during uh, the Sunday night show. This coming up Sunday, uh, while Frank's out of town, uh, he'll relay it to me, and I'll relay it to you guys next week. All right, we'll see you. All right, buddy. Have a good night, Captain Frank. All right, later. See you, buddy. I got to get used to that. You got to <laughs> hang up on people prior to them hanging up in the radio show studio. There's something about it, I guess, when you're live on the radio and your caller hangs up before you do, there's some kind of, like, pause or I, – I forget how he explained it to me, but you got to be quick on the hang-up button. <laughs> so I've gotten better at that, hanging That's up on people rude. fast. It's not rude. It's uh, it's apparently a thing in you know the studio. I, you know what I don't like is, you know, you're, you're having a conversation with somebody and then all of a sudden the line just goes dead. Yeah. They don't say bye. You know, they're just like, yeah, no, no that gotta, sounds great. You got to wrap it up a little bit, but don't let them hang up on you. You got to hang up on them. Got that's it. That's, that's studio probably my rule. problem. <laughs> uh, all right. So we talked a little bit about red tide weather. One thing we wanted to talk about was weather. Man, it's already 9 o'clock. Holy moly. Before we do weather, let's give away our first free trip of the night. Every live show, guys, we give away over $700 in free fishing trips. All you have to do to get entered to a chance to win a free fishing trip is comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. Then when you're picked as that lucky winner, Josh got the name picker working, all you have to do is within five minutes, you have to text that phone number on the other side, uh, right there, that phone number. Text that phone number, your home address, uh, with your full name, uh, as it displays on Facebook and as you want it displayed on the certificate. And uh, we'll send you out that certificate in about a week or two. So all you have to do is comment and then watch the show live. And then if you're picked as the lucky winner, text that phone number. <laughs> so that's all it takes to win uh, a part of those over $700 in free fishing trips we give away every show. We're going to first give away our five-hour half day for two guests. Five-hour half day for two guests. That is a $130 value coming at you absolutely free. Josh, roll that name picker, buddy. Let's see who won. Bill Murray, watching from Eustis, Florida. Eustis, that's way out there in the in the sticks. I believe that's North Lakeland. I just want to point out that we have over 330 people watching. Yeah. But only 263 of you guys actually said something. Yeah. You Got know, a that's... comment to be entered to win. We're gonna, and we also cut it off about halfway through the show because some people like to pop in at the very end of the show, and throw their name in the hat to try to win that free overnighter, and we actually cut it off uh, so that way it doesn't pick up any of those last minute 
uh, viewers, you have to watch a majority of the show in order to be eligible to win. So keep in mind, you got to get in early, you got to comment early, and uh, you got to watch the show because if you don't watch the show and your name gets picked and you don't claim it by texting that phone number quickly, you don't get the free trip. So make sure to tune in early, comment early, and then watch the whole show. And if you're picked as a lucky winner, make sure you claim it quickly. So as I was saying, let's get into the weather, Josh. Show them what the weather's doing. We are into the dog days of summer, folks. So if you go to hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, scroll down to the weather links page. The wind finder forecast is what I like to start out with. And you can click right there, Josh, on the 5 and 10 hour forecast to get us started. And uh, there we go, Egmont Key Channel forecast. Uh, you can see basically very moderate wind pattern. Right now, we've got a high pressure on top of us a little bit. Josh, I'm going to take over the mouse for a minute. Uh, so you can, on our website, on under fishing trips, scroll down to weather links. It brings you the weather page. The bottom of the weather page is my favorite uh, website here. What screen am I? There's too many screens up, Josh. <laughs> uh, SpaghettiModels.com, the ultimate weather page, as it's called there on our weather, weather page, weather link site. And uh, this is Mike's weather page. And I'm going to scroll over here to the third column from the left. So not all the way left, not middle, but all the way uh, the third one from the You're left. I'm in the middle of the screen. I'm in the middle of the screen. No, I'm in the right column. There we go. Prog charts. These are what we call prog charts. And these bad boys are what we use to kind of pick up the weather patterns. And hopefully I don't crash Chrome by opening too many tabs. Let's see. So no, this I think is we can handle it. This is August 1st. You can see the high pressure sitting right over the state of Florida. We've got a tail end of a low pressure kind of poking down. This little pressure gradient caused that line of storms this morning. My father texted me. He's like, I don't understand the weather. Why are we getting a line of storms? And that's what it was, that little tail of that low pressure moving across the state brought that little line of showers. Missed our local area, but kind of got those to the north of us. Then this is, I believe, tomorrow, that high pressure kind of subsides and that low pressure kind of pushes further down. So we're going to have probably an increased chance of showers as that low pressure extends into the area. That low dips a little too much, a little more than I would like there Tuesday, August 3rd. This time of year, really, really dangerous when these low pressures dip this low. What will happen is a little section, you can see it actually right here. So this little section, I'll scroll in a little bit so you can see it. This little piece over there hanging off of Mexico, as that rolls into the Gulf, it can break off the main frontal boundary and it can hang out down here in the Bay of Campeche or BOC as they call it. In the Bay of Campeche, the way it is, uh, the topography of that area and the geographic makeup of that area creates and breeds tropical systems. So not a good sign when we see those low pressures move down this time of year. And look at that. There it is. So that was August 4th we just looked at. Here's August 5th. Scroll in a little bit so you can see it. August 5th. Look what I was just talking about. What you don't want to have happen. That little low pressure broke off and hung out right here in the Bay of Campeche. Not a good sign. That's when we have hurricanes kind of spurt up out of nowhere on us. And you get very little notice because they essentially will just come out of nowhere right Right in the Gulf. They'll form in the Gulf. Not a good thing. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully uh, just pointing out something to keep an eye on for sure. But as we move into this is Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Looks Overall, it looks pretty good uh, for the coming future. And then we get into the weekend. That high pressure settles back in. So... Pretty decent trend weather-wise. We're going to go back to our website, close some of these windows. 
Go back to the website and go back to the wind finder forecast, the five and 10 hour area. And you can see on the top here, this graph shows us that basically 10 to 15 knots or less for the foreseeable future. This is, what day is it? Sunday, so today was beautiful. Monday looks good. We see that increased chance of rain kind of midweek with that low pressure hanging out, basically two foot or less, two and a half foot or less, 15 mile an hour or less, and then that high pressure settles in, rain chance goes away, and no wind, no waves, and super hot conditions probably over the weekend, looks like. So that's the weather. Uh, as far as moon phase goes, moon phase wise, we are on the last quarter moon. Last quarter moon phase was uh, July 31st. Let me unlock my iPad here. You can have the mouse back, Josh. <laughs> so last quarter was July 31st. We're on the new moon, coming up on the new moon, August 8th. As we approach that new moon, typically what that does is uh, makes the tidal surges a little bit more severe as we approach either a new or full moon. You see bigger swings in the tide, more water moving inshore. That typically means a good bite. Uh, offshore, it means we deal with more current. And new moon means no moonlight at night, typically. So the fish feed better during the day with more water movement and typically a stronger daytime bite. So looking forward to that. Uh, Temperature-wise, the dog days of summer are here. So typically around 10 a.m. to about 2 to 4 p.m., the bite can be very difficult, especially on days like we saw in that weather forecast coming up Friday, Saturday, Sunday, when there's no wind, no waves, and it's smoking hot. Water's not moving. Currents aren't moving. It's super hot, super stagnant. It gets like soupy air. It's hard for you to get outside and have a lot of energy. It's the same for the fish. When the water's not moving, you don't have a breeze going, you don't have an anchor heading, it makes it very difficult during the dead heat of the day. Luckily, on a 39-hour trip, you get that night fishing time, you get that early morning, you get that later afternoon sundown bite. During the midday period on a 39-hour trip in later July, August, September, it's a good time to go inside and enjoy a, a, a movie or uh, perhaps lower your tackle size. So that's the time when the bite's really tough. Not a lot's going on. You could drop down in leader size and sometimes trick those fish into feeding, even if they're a little less aggressive. I still start uh, the spot and kind of end the spot with heavier, kind of more average 50, 60 pound test. But during the heat of the day, 10 a.m. to around four in the afternoon, uh, start a spot, drop down a, a cut thread fin on 50, 60 pound double snell rig. If I don't get a bite and Looking around, the bite's really slow. I might grab that other rod behind me, rigged up with 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon, smaller hooks, maybe even a single hook rig with a smaller chunk of thread fin or a live shrimp uh, or maybe a cut piece of octopus or squid drop down. And a lot of times that lighter tackle, smaller hook, smaller bait will entice those fish that are a little less leader shy, a little less aggressive into feeding. But you do run the risk of breaking off on a gag grouper, scamp grouper, reg grouper if you're using too light a tackle. So it is a risk, but when the bite's not going well because of weather, that is a good opportunity to try to overcome it by tricking them, fooling them with a little bit different approach, lighter tackle approach. Uh, and then obviously another tip is to try to plan your trip around that weather by trying to get out early, uh, fish early or fish later in the day or fish those night trips. The nighttime snapper trips typically do very well this time of year on the mangrove snapper. We tried to get Captain Joe Drew to call in, uh, but unfortunately he's got the uh, 5 a.m. departure, so he's got to be up at 2 a.m. tomorrow to run his trip. He just ran the 39-hour trip, and he was telling me about how they had a good 
bite overall. It was picky. It was slower. But by the end of the trip, if you grinded it out and stayed at that rail, you put together a good catch of fish. The nighttime bite was solid on the mangroves. Not too much else fishing uh, or too much else biting. Uh, vermilion, porgies, that kind of thing. It was mostly mangrove snapper. Uh, but they did pick some nice red snapper during the day. Uh, but it made it a little bit picky because we're at the tail end of red snapper season they get picked over pretty hard fished hard and it makes it a little bit more tricky for those red snappers so overall they had a decent catch and caught plenty of red snapper mangroves kind of nice couple gags but just had to work really hard at it and that's kind of what the bite's been like the last couple days it has a lot to do with that pressure gradient that high pressure that stagnant stagnant water uh, from lack of wind lack of tides, lack of current, and then uh, the barometer being so static and high, and then temperatures being so high, all contributed to that slower bite the last couple days. But the tail end of last weekend, the start of this past week, and hopefully this weekend, or the start of this week with that uh, high pressure kind of easing out of the area, fallen barometer, we should see a much more improved bite of fish as we move into the start of this week. But time will tell. Hurry up and wait is uh, kind of my, my favorite uh, term uh, when it comes to improving the bite. Um, also wanted to give you guys uh, a reminder. Don't forget about our Real Animals radio show every Saturday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on News Radio 970 WFLA. You can catch it on the iHeartRadio app if you're not local. So download the iHeartRadio app. Just type in News Radio 970. You can listen live 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. every Saturday morning. Uh, I'm the official co-host of the show now, so very excited about that. And August 14th, Captain Mike Anderson announced to me uh, that he's going to be out of town. So I'm driving the boat by myself uh, August 14th, running a radio show. A uh, little excited, a little nervous, and uh, hopefully uh, my friends will back me up and be a co-host uh, sent some messages to the Salt Strong brothers, and I'm hoping and praying Luke, Luke and Joe Simons come through for me. If not, I've got some other good ideas for backups, but they were my go-to, so hopefully they uh, can join me. Uh, also, our next uh, next announcement was about the sand. We just had another sand meeting with the sand issues going on inside John's Pass. We just had our wrap-up meeting so that $35,000 study the county conned us all into doing, the city paid 10, uh, 10 grand, uh, myself and our landlords uh, paid 10 grand, the FDOT uh, kicked in 7,500 and the county kicked in 7,500 to do a six month study that didn't even bother to look at jetties or any other mitigation strategies because it was such a small insignificant issue in the grand scheme of coastal uh, hydrology was the term the scientists used. So basically this issue is so small and so small scale that it didn't require anything more than six months and it wouldn't ever be necessary to look at something like jetties for such a small issue. Continue to use that phrasing, which is very frustrating. Issue's been going on for 30 plus years. It's affecting over 50 businesses inside John's Pass, but unfortunately deemed and termed small by our county government. So extremely frustrating. So long story short, $35,000 might as well have piled it up in the parking lot out here and burned it because the conclusion of the study was, hey, we should dredge. Been saying that for 30 plus years, bud. But now we have a scientist who also agrees that we should dredge. So now the next step is nothing. Nothing. It's, it stops here. We found out we need to dredge. And that's as far as it's going. Uh, we have an extreme issue, extreme roadblock in the form of county government. Uh, good old Barry Burton, our county administrator, is just a total, total roadblock to anything that isn't benefiting him it is extremely frustrating 
Luckily, the city government's behind us. We have a great mayor, John Hendricks, and we have some great local representation. Uh, Linda Cheney, Nick DeSigley, uh, all congressional representatives for our or, uh, House, Florida House uh, representatives who are going to help us out. And uh, hopefully our next congressional representative will help us out too. Chris came down, helped us out, sent a letter to the governor talking about it, but basically where we fell there. So hopefully we'll get some more movement on the sand issue. But our big move is working with Linda Cheney, Nick DeSigley, uh, Speaker Sproles, and the people of the Florida House uh, at this next legislative session coming up here uh, October through like February to try to hopefully get some funding carved out for a large-scale dredge operation for Johns Pass Channel and Johns Pass Bridge and kind of clearing up the area of the sand issue. And if that happens, that will be super cool. We'll obviously have to pay to dredge our own private land, but a majority of this issue goes over state, county, federal, and FDOT land. And uh, that's what we'll need legislative help with. But if uh, we get that accomplished, we'll have a deep Johns Pass, and the scientist estimates it will last for around 20 to 40 years. And then the issue will be right back to where it is now. But let's not bother to look at jetties to solve the problem forever. Let's just continue to waste $35,000 and $2 million on a dredge project every 20 to 30 years. So frustrating. But it is what it is. That's a whole nother show going into all the sand issues. Uh, before we get into anything else, let's give away our 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. Then we're going to get into some of y'all's questions. Got some of these questions pulled up here. And uh, we will get into some of your questions here shortly. But Josh, let's see who won our 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. That is a... $218 value coming at you now. Who won our 10-hour all-day trip for two guests? Another Eustace. Oh, that's random. Yeah. That's really crazy. Chuck Clark, what's going on, man? He won a 10-hour all-day trip for two guests. Make sure you claim that free trip by texting that phone number within about five minutes if you're clicked or if you're picked as one of the uh, lucky winners. Uh, best bait for amberjack uh, is one of the questions we saw here. Best bait for amberjack would be big, big live baits. B very large live baits would definitely be your best bet for amberjack. Some of those baits that we catch while out there fishing. Like the bigger porgies, uh, the white grunts, all great options for those amber jacks. Or if you can find them, some big pin fish. Uh, but it's tough with the live bait right now in the red tide. But hopefully we'll be able to get some live baits out there. But with the red tide getting worse along the coast, that means we have to transit through 6 to 10 miles. Um, and it really really makes it difficult to get live bait past that area um, of basically dead water wasteland where that red tide bloom is located. So hopefully it'll ease up and we'll be able to get live baits out there. But uh, until we do, that big live bait you catch while offshore works really well. Or vertical jigs is a great option too. Uh, even big dead baits, some of the bigger amberjacks I've seen caught uh, were on large strips of bonita, so you never know. Let's see what other questions. Uh, can you win free trips if you don't have Facebook? Unfortunately, the random name generator is just that. It is random. Uh, and uh, uh, basically how it works is if you comment on our Facebook page, if you're watching on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, you comment one time, and the first uh, half of the show or so, your name gets thrown in that hopper. And uh, it doesn't matter how many times you comment, your name gets thrown in the hat, and then it 
generates those names and picks one randomly. Uh, and it is 100% random. We've seen the code behind it. Uh, some people get upset, but hey, it's random. There's not much more I can do about it. Literally, the URL is random name generator, and it's used millions of times across the nation by streamers everywhere. Uh, we didn't just make it up, but hey, we could just stop giving away trips. <laughs> it's always comical to me uh, to see some of the issues that we run into giving away free stuff, Josh. But Oh, yeah. Like you have to watch chat. on Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, it takes two seconds. You can use a, a random name. Call it Joe, Joe Smith, John Smith, Sally Sue. Make up a name. Throw in a fake email. You can do no name at gmail.com and uh, make a quick Gmail account to use for Facebook. You don't have to put a photo in. You literally could make a Facebook account in 20 seconds to go to Hubbard's Marina uh, on Facebook, like the page, and comment one time. You can watch on YouTube. You can watch on uh, Instagram. But, yes, you do have to make a Facebook account. Um, shouldn't take you too long. And uh, you'll be able to get a free stuff. We're trying to give you free stuff. So you might have to take a minute or two to create a Facebook account. But you don't have to put in your info or your photos if you're not into social media. But it is what it is, guys. I apologize. Uh, bring back long-range trips. We have long-range trips. Uh, we have been running 39-hour trips every two days, essentially. Uh, so we got lots of long-range trips. We got the 12-hour extreme trip going on every Wednesday and Sunday outside of Red Snapper season. During Red Snapper season, uh, those long-range 12-hour extreme trip video or uh, trips only run run on Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, some questions about our regulars club. You can join the regulars club now, but if you uh, join on the regulars club now, you're only going to get about uh, now it's August um, a four month membership. Whereas if you wait. Our regulars clubs uh, for 2020, what year is it? <laughs> for 2022, our regulars club will open up around December 1st. So you can sign up for the regulars club around December 1st and then get essentially a 13-month membership. So if you're interested in the regulars club, shoot me an email to info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com. Include your name, your full name, your cell phone or best contact phone number, and uh, obviously your email because you're emailing me. And I'll send you over the Regulars Club information once I get to the 30,000 or so emails I got to answer. And I'll send you over the info and I'll add your name to the Regulars Club 2022 list. When we start signups in uh, early December, I'll give you a, a reminder email and I'll give you a shout and see if you still want to sign up. If you're already a Regulars Club member, we start renewals sometime around uh, early to mid-November. Call those of you who are already members to get re-signed back up if you so choose. And then we start signing up new members. Everything's based on seniority in the Regulars Club. Uh, you don't necessarily get any preferential treatment. We just learned to, uh, we learned to know you better, and uh, we... Uh, give you a discount to make it more affordable for you to go fishing more often. It's more of a loyalty program than anything else. Uh, all the same rules apply, and if anything, the Regulars Club are kind of held to a more higher standard um, because you go fishing a lot, you go out with us a lot, you're expected to know the rules, and, and being a shining example, uh, kind of like Estelle Wolfman is, a shining example of, uh, of a outgoing kind personality trying to help other people and don't be like jennifer roberts <laughs> just a quick example uh, <laughs> uh if those of you who know jennifer roberts you know i'm kidding but she's a little she is a little much sometimes yeah there she is she's commenting she knows what i mean it's out of love <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What is red tide? Uh, red tide is a naturally occurring organism. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I can't, but it's a naturally occurring organism. It's been around for millennia. Uh, literally Spanish explorers, uh, found it in the Gulf back in the day in the 1500s when they were exploring our area for the first time. 
Red tides naturally occurring, it occurs in the Gulf of Mexico in deeper offshore open water. And what happens is when it moves, gets pushed into shallow coastal waters and salinity uh, levels are right, coastal conditions are right, there's food present and there's enough of the organism present, you have the potential for what's called a bloom or a hab harmful algal bloom and when these habs occur whether it's blue green algae uh the red tide canara bravis or however you pronounce it there's a bunch of different organisms uh that can create these blooms or habs that kill fish right now we're having that kind of common red tide bloom in the area and uh fueled mostly from all the nutrients poured into tampa bay by city of saint pete Hillsborough County, Port Manatee, Manatee County, all the beautiful city and county municipalities who have very outdated sewage infrastructures and wastewater infrastructures. Downtown St. Pete, I think they build a new high rise every week. The sewage infrastructure hasn't been addressed for decades. Continually has sewage dump and our mayor has so much of a political guys he stands up on stage and points the finger at piney point which granted piney point was an uh, environmental disaster of a enormous scale almost 300 million gallons of phosphate mining crap was dumped into the bay but the saint pete mayor has been dumping sewage water into tampa bay granted not almost 300 million gallons of it but hundreds of thousands of gallons For as long as I've been alive, the city of St. Pete's been doing that. So, And literally, they did it within a week. They dumped about 10,000, or it was, I think, 2,000 gallons into this small bay when there's literally red tide and dead fish in that bay. So pretty comical how political it gets when you're standing up on stage pointing the finger at a, a politician from the other side of the aisle trying to make them look bad and throwing mud at them when... In reality, you're doing the same thing, feeding the red tide blooms. So we all need to work together, remove the politics. And if I see one person say, oh, it's a Democratic issue, it's a Republican issue, our governor isn't doing it because of Trump, you're banned. (laughs) Don't want you on the page. It's not political. It's environmental, guys. we got to put aside our egos and our politics and pay attention to our environment. Here in the state of Florida, It doesn't matter if you work at a hotel, a restaurant. It doesn't matter if you work at Walt Disney World in Orlando. Our water is our economy. It's our lifeblood. If we don't have beautiful, pristine waters and great bustling fisheries and beautiful beaches, no one's going to come to Florida. Literally, Florida man is a thing because of all the crazy stuff that happens here in Florida. People still come here because of our beautiful beaches and beautiful environment. We ruin that. No one's coming to Florida. (laughs) Even the Florida man will move out. I I doubt that. (laughs) I I come from California, and I used to hear stories about him, and I still moved here. Oh, it is is very, very, very frustrating. I thought it was like a superhero running around, you know, until I got here and realized it's a conglomerate Florida man is a superhero. Are you kidding? It's a conglomerate of of Superman. Saves the day every time. (laughs) He does. Oh, man. Uh, uh, So basically, uh, to answer the question about corporate greed versus politics, yeah, corporate greed has a lot to do with it, but the most recent Piney Point spill wasn't anything to do with a corporation. A corporation went defunct. The land was actually controlled by DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection. They knew about the issue. They ignored the issue, and the spill occurred. Um, same thing with city of St. Petersburg and this outdated sewage infrastructure is money is being diverted everywhere else, except for looking at our sewage infrastructure. For example, new growth, everybody loves new high rises and tall hotels and more visitors and more tax base to drive our economy. Everybody loves that. Everybody who lives here loves the low property taxes and low taxes overall in the state of Florida. We're not like California where 60% of your income goes back to the government in the form of tax. We have very low overall state taxes here in Florida, and that's due to our economy, 
tourism driven economy and all the great visitors we have in our state bed tax all that good stuff but all that money is being diverted to other things when it should be spent on resiliency issues making our infrastructures and our environment resilient to the exponential growth we've got to plan our sewage structures around our cities not plan our cities or plan our cities around our sewage infrastructure not in the retrospect say oh we've been having sewage leaks for 30 years how do we fix our sewage infrastructure no you got to start from the beginning i i was talking to one person who works for some uh uh government entity close by and i'm not going to get into names or anything like that because it just doesn't do anything good but fuel the political fire and again this isn't political but literally one of the largest growing areas that is pristine coastline is around the south shore of tampa bay and they have these bustling neighborhoods that are exploding hundreds of thousands of people are moving down there and there is one large area that literally has one water line going in and one wastewater line going out. That's it, supporting hundreds of thousands of people. If there's some type of break in that main water line, hundreds of thousands of people will be without water to their homes. And if there's one break in that wastewater line coming out, millions of gallons of wastewater are going to either go into our rivers and streams or into Tampa Bay. Very, very disappointing that we're still on these archaic sewage infrastructures when it's 2021. I mean, come on, people. We put people on the moon. We've got little tiny microscopic cameras. We're doing live videos here with, with virtual backgrounds. We can't figure out how to build sewage lines Let's, let's, let's uh, take a step back here, folks, and have some responsible growth plans, take care of our environment, and stop polluting the waters. Stop deciding to throw millions of gallons of phosphate waste into the bay. It's crazy. It's crazy. Thank you, Paul, Paul, for the stars. We're moving away from my rants, and uh, we are getting out of time. Um... But I want to answer one more question so we don't end on a rant. I saw a question uh, about 12 hours. Longer. Oh, they. Uh, someone wants a trip longer than 44 hours. We're, unfortunately, uh, we used to do a 63-hour trip. We're not going to be doing any of those longer trips right now. In the long run, we've unfortunately got some uh, kind of... Uh, personal issues, if you will, uh, that need to be solved here. Uh, and then once those are solved and put aside, the long-term goal over the next five to 10 years is to hopefully build a few new boats. One of those boats being a multi-passenger charter boat, which will probably be sooner than later. Uh, we need to build another 49-passenger pontoon boat for uh, kind of booze cruises, uh, uh, bachelorette, bachelor party, uh, sunset, island, ferry, charters, and then we need to build another party boat. Similar to the Florida, very economical and geared towards long-range offshore trips, and that will give us the flexibility to do a more unique schedule, if you will. Right now, we're kind of pigeon-toed. We're blessed to be very busy. Um, we essentially max out our schedule the florida was at the dock for like i think in 62 days maybe two days probably only one day that the florida was actually at the dock during june july uh, and even the end of may uh, yeah. it stays at the dock only one night a week uh, the rest of the time it's offshore doing back to back to back to back long range trips. So if we throw a 63 hour trip in there, or anything longer than 44 hours, we have to cancel multiple trips. And when we cancel multiple trips, we upset a lot of people and those 63 hours were really great. Uh, we caught a lot of fish, we did well, but you're essentially upsetting potentially 150 people by canceling three other trips to try to make 18 people happy and they're very weather sensitive. The weather is at all adverse. You have to cancel those trips where our 39-hour trips, our half-day trips, 
we can still run if it's three, four, five, even six foot on the 39 hour trips. Whereas a uh, 63 hour deep drop, mm-mm, anything more than about two and a half, three foot, you, you ultimately can't go out there, even in that bigger boat, because it makes it impossible to fish a thousand foot of water when you're in three foot seas and you got a wind and a head current and all that good stuff. So super frustrating. Yeah, the Plagic Magic trips were great. The the Key West, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, it's a fort down there. I can't think of it. Fort off of Key West. You're asking the Don't wrong Don't look person. at me like that. You've got a <laughs> I, computer. I Google, Google it. it. Uh, they're dry Tortugas, the Tortugas <laughs> trips. We used to do that. Uh, so Tortugas trips uh, and... Uh, the Pelagic Magic, that was a 73-hour, 74-hour trip originally. Uh, we did a 96-hour trip when I was a kid. Uh, so we've done a lot of different options with the Florida, but we really need a different style boat, and that's what we're hopefully going to be building in the very near future uh, here at Hubbard's Marina. So uh, looking forward to that. So those are kind of our long-term overarching goals, and we've also got some more near 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 torn near term uh kind of cool stuff in the works too that uh we unfortunately can't speak to yet but we will shortly once we uh solidify those exciting plans so stay tuned fort dade that was it thanks roxanne but tortugas was what i was thinking no fort dade fort jefferson yeah fort jefferson that's what it is fort dade is on egmont key Man, I'm tired. <laughs> so next announcement is don't forget, if you're one of our supporters, uh, we are going to have our supporters after show. Um, probably going to start that around 945. So if you're on the supporters uh, page, don't forget to tune in to the supporters after show at 945 p.m., Hopefully you'll join us for that if you're one of the supporters. If you're not a supporter, you can become a supporter today at the Hubbard's Marina Facebook uh, page on our timeline there. At the very top, you'll see a Become a Supporter button. That'll take you to a short video that outlines a little bit about what you get, basically behind-the-scenes info, a little bit more contact. You get a supporter's badge, and you get access to our private supporters group in which we do that private supporters after show, after every one of our live stream shows, and we give you a little bit more content through the week. Lately, it's just been a lot of baby pictures be honest with you but i haven't been in the office in a week and a half two weeks so i appreciate all the supporters hanging in there with me and uh not leaving us uh due to that but hopefully you supporters have picked up your free supporter shirts um well i think i covered everything else again shout out to the real animals make sure you check out the real animals radio show every saturday morning 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on News Radio 970 WFLA. With that, Josh, I think it's time to give away our free 39-hour trip for one guest. $399 value, absolutely free. Going to one person. Let's see who won that free 39-hour trip for one guest. And the winner is... Randy Kessel, appreciate you uh, watching Randy. Randy's a longtime viewer. That's pretty cool, and he fishes with us from time to time. Appreciate you watching, Randy. Congrats on the wind. We're going to show you. We're going to end the show with some baby photos. For those of you who aren't supporters, we're going to show you a, a kind of a quick snippet of what the supporters have been enjoying with some of those uh, baby photos. And while Josh scrolls through those, I want to give a shout out to Yamaha Outboard Engines for supporting Hubbard's Marina with our unique uh, Yamaha 425 XTOs on the Flying Hub 2. Finally found a great reliable engine to make that boat really, really perform awesomely. And uh, keep they take a, a beating and keep on ticking. Our entire fleet is going back to Yamaha engines now. Uh, Yamaha is going to be on all. All our boats, I will never, ever, ever, ever 
buy a Honda outboard engine again. I would recommend you don't either. <laughs> Suzuki is pretty good. They're getting better. Mercury is great for private recreational use. Uh, and if you don't intend on pushing a heavy boat and uh, heavy loads of people often, they are just not low-end power motors. And uh, they a little tricky to work with people around town on the Mercuries. But Pro Marine is a great outfit if you're looking for Mercury use. And uh, in the Suzuki one, I can't think of the name. Precision for Suzuki. They've made a name for themselves locally. But we are with Central Marine and Yamaha, and we will not be changing. They just came out with an app. Really cool. I was reading an article today, Josh. You, uh, you get your new Yamaha motors from an authorized Yamaha dealer. You download the app. You put in your engine ID number. And once the warranty information comes through, it literally will keep track of your engine hours and send you push notifications when it's time to do service interval changes. And if you're a mm -hmm. DIY guy, it'll spit out on your app what parts you need to get from your local Yamaha dealer. And then it will show you videos on how to do it on your engine. That's actually pretty neat. Like, what? That's, that's 2021 stuff for you, man. It'll monitor your engine hours and then show you videos and show you what parts you need to fix it and uh, service it. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool. Uh, I don't know of any other engine company that's out there doing kind of cutting-edge stuff like that, plus what Yamaha does for our fisheries. Also, Bass Pro Shops, really appreciate you guys. Hopefully going to be back in Bass Pro Shops doing an in-person seminar shortly. Salt Strong, our buddies over at Salt Strong, Joe and Luke Simons. If you're not a Salt Strong Insider member, you should be. You're missing out cheaper than a cup of coffee per day, and you will get much, much more value. Go to saltstrong.com forward slash Hubbard. If you become an Insider member through that link, it will actually give you a buy one, get three free deal. So check that one out. Salinity, uh, friends over at Salinity and all our custom gear and, of course, Ingle coolers. Don't touch the one in the back of my truck. I live and die by that cooler. <laughs> now my son does, too. My son uh, put him in the back of the truck, Jack or uh, Josh, at a, a store mm -hmm. and hand him the bag of stuff that we bought inside. And he will go into the bed of the truck, and he's learned to unlatch all three latches on the Ingle cooler. And he tries to open up the lid. It's too heavy for him because it's <laughs> a, a rotomotive cooler. But I help him open it up. He sets the drinks in the ice for me and then uh it's it's hilarious i close it for him and he latches it back and then comes back over he's a cool kid he's already learning how to load the cooler for his daddy hey he's smart if i can teach him how to pour whiskey but my wife won't let me do that yet yeah, <laughs> maybe no, that's maybe five soon. five yeah, years old yeah a little bit a little bit more he's only two we got time. gotta be able to climb up and grab a glass out of the counter you know true true we gotta get him started on the glassware first mm -hmm. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. We got to get set up for our supporter show. If you're a supporter, make sure you hop over to the supporters page. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Hopefully, we'll see you next week for another episode of our live stream show. And hopefully, we'll see you every Saturday morning for the Real Animals Radio Show. Good night, y'all. See you next week. <laughs>